uh, interesting for me to be uh, in Ukraine, uh, considering that generations of my father's um, family have lived here. So for me, it's uh, it was in a way uh, symbolic to come here, and I feel um, I feel very uh, privileged to be able to serve here uh, during historic times for for the country and to to make a contribution to Ukraine's uh, transformation. July 9th, 1997, Madrid. This day has become the most important in the history of Ukraine-NATO relations. It was then that one of the fundamental documents for cooperation, the Charter on Special Partnership, was signed. However, the first cooperation between Ukraine and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization began already in 1992. Just four months after the proclamation of the independence of Ukraine, the alliance invited the Ukrainian Minister of Foreign Affairs to take part in an extraordinary meeting of the North Atlantic Cooperation Council. And in 1994, the country was the first among CIS states to join the Partnership for Peace program, and it remains the only country that participated in all the major peacekeeping missions of the alliance to this day. Of course, the Partnership for Peace uh, has been a success story for NATO and Ukraine has been a very important part of that uh, partnership. It has contributed to many uh, NATO missions and operations. Uh, it's a valued contributor to Euro-Atlantic security. In 2016, uh, we were, as it were, uh, we received a new status here in Ukraine uh, when the NATO representation to Ukraine was uh, formally opened. Uh, the representation uh, represents a step up uh, in terms of uh, our presence here, and it, can, it uh, is composed of both offices. Um, and I think it's a recognition of the important role, uh, an increased role, that NATO is playing uh, in support of Ukraine. The NATO Information and Documentation Center was the first office to open in Ukraine in July 1997 already. Uh, and it was actually a first NATO office which was opened ever outside of the NATO borders. So this shows the significance that NATO has given to, to Ukraine uh, for almost uh, more than 20 years. Our task now has become much larger and we support in communicating and communication activities all the work that NATO does in, in Ukraine. I do think that our presence here significantly increased since Ukraine uh, became the victim of uh, Russian aggression. And therefore we fully support Ukraine's sovereignty, its territorial integrity and its right to decide its own future. After 2014, the level of public confidence in the activities of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization almost doubled. If earlier about 20% of the population trusted NATO, today this index is already higher than 45%. The level of uh, public support for any institution is very important in open democratic societies. That's the underlying factor of our work, whether it's in NATO countries or in partner countries like, like Ukraine, because the level of public support indicates the trust in our organization, so that's why it's really important for us. However, regional indexes are still significantly different. For example, in the southeast of Ukraine, certain segments of the population still believe in Soviet stereotypes, which were revived by the present-day Russian propaganda. The same type of stereotypes that I encounter in different regions of Ukraine, that NATO is a military organization only, that it's um, uh, an organization which is uh, solemnly led by United Nations, uh, and that's an organization which is a Cold War relic. Well, first of all, NATO is a political military organization. The decisions at NATO are taken by consensus, which means that all the 29 member states, or how many we are at any given point of our history, everybody has to agree. On the 4th of April, we will be celebrating 70th anniversary of NATO. Uh, which means that we have been around for seven decades, out of which Cold War ended nearly three decades ago. So I think the fact that we are still here and planning to be here a bit longer shows that we are not just a relic. Um, but we are an organization which is able to adapt, modernize and take on new challenges. 
I think it is important to have uh, an open mind and to approach uh, question with curiosity. And then it's up to every citizen to decide whether or not they wish to support our organization. But we wish everybody to first have a decent level of understanding and factual and correct information before they make their own opinion. Since the establishment of NATO representation to Ukraine, its activities have also expanded considerably. Today, cooperation covers the full spectrum of political and military dialogue between NATO and Ukraine, as well as a number of practical initiatives. In practical terms, the most important event was the adoption of the Law on National Security, elaborated by Ukrainian lawmakers jointly with experts and advisors of the Alliance. We consider that the law on national security as it was adopted is a very significant step um, which will uh, bring Ukraine closer to Euro-Atlantic standards and principles. Um, it contains a number of important innovations uh, and uh, now the, the challenge is the implementation of the law. Uh, in order to implement this law, um, Ukraine has to revise or uh, adopt new legislation in a number of areas, uh, and that is now uh, the challenge in which we also uh, are uh, supporting Ukraine and Ukrainian authorities. The first uh, is the, uh, a new law on parliamentary oversight of the security sector. This is a, a very important aspect. It's about civilian control and it's about democratic oversight. Uh, secondly, the uh, law national security creates the framework for uh, a reformed security service of Ukraine, which will create a more uh, modern, uh, more focused uh, security service. Thirdly, a new law on intelligence uh, will also need to be adopted. Fourthly, and it's all related really, um, there's a law on state secrets and the management of classified information. Uh, here again, Ukraine needs to uh, modernize this system if it is to implement the key principle of transparency of the defense uh, and security budgets. And last but not least, um, the uh, area of defense industry also uh, requires uh, modernization and reform, um, including the defense procurement aspects. And, uh, and here, um, already work is also underway. In general, the NATO program for the practical support of Ukraine includes more than 40 events that transcend the borders of defense cooperation. The so-called Comprehensive Assistance Package serves as a basis for such cooperation. The key instruments are trust funds, advanced training programs and consultations of Alliance advisors. We have our Medical Rehabilitation Trust Fund, which has helped uh, many dozens of servicemen and women uh, that have been wounded in the uh, operation in the East. Uh, we have also, through that trust fund, been able to support a number of medical rehabilitation institutions with um, modern equipment. Uh, and we have, for instance, supported Team Ukraine, uh, who have uh, been very successful in the Invictus Games. Um, and we are all very proud of that. Through our Cyber Defense Trust Fund, we have helped Ukraine become more resilient against cyber attacks, which unfortunately are a very current threat here and elsewhere. Um, we have delivered spe specialized equipment so that uh, Ukraine can better investigate cyber attacks uh, with a view to preventing them in the future. And uh, the last example I would use is that of the uh, C4 Trust Fund, which stands for uh, command, control, communications, and computers. Under that trust fund, we have implemented a regional airspace security program, which uh, has helped Ukraine and is helping Ukraine to better handle uh, air security incidents. Besides that, NATO trust funds are engaged in scientific cooperation, issues of planning in the event of emergency situations of a civilian nature, and strategic communications. The main objective is strengthening the government communication so that Ukraine can, with a coordinated, strong voice, 
uh, be resilient against Russian disinformation and propaganda. Uh, but also we believe it's very important to have effective communication on behalf of the government to be able to communicate about your successes, about your reforms, uh, both inside and outside of, of Ukraine. We have very interesting uh, cooperation with Ukraine in the area of uh, countering hybrid uh, warfare. Uh, this is an area where, unfortunately, Ukraine has uh, collected a lot of experience and lessons learned over the past five years and is willing to share those lessons learned with the rest of, of the NATO allies. So we have a joint NATO-Ukraine hybrid warfare platform. Today, Ukraine aims to embody the standards and principles of NATO until 2020. In order to achieve this, the country has to unify standards for bodies in the sphere of security and defense. NATO countries have had many years of experience in doing this, in delivering security to their populations. Uh, we have countries that have gone through very similar transformations. And other countries that used to be part of uh, the Warsaw Pact, uh, they have spent more than 10 years, uh, for instance, going through this, this very deep and structural reform. So it's no easy task, it's a very complicated task. Our allies have gone through this without having to fight a conflict on their own territory, which is um, a further complicating factor. So we do realize how challenging this is uh, for Ukraine, but we are also here to help Ukraine in that difficult process. Also, the Ukraine's roadmap for reform, the Strategic Defense Bulletin, sets uh, a number of uh, actions and goals that have to be uh, reached. Um, here Ukraine has already taken significant steps. For instance, it has moved to a civilian defense minister. Soon the Ministry of Defense uh, will also civilianize, become uh, less staffed by military personnel and more by civilians. Um, so we, we look forward to, to Ukraine uh, keeping up the pace of reform. Uh, we are here to help. Representatives of the NATO headquarters are sure that 2018 was extremely productive for Ukraine. The level of civilian control and democratic oversight of security and defense institutions has increased. 2018 has been a very significant and very productive year. One of the very important uh, milestones last year uh, at the political level was, of course, the NATO Brussels summit, which took place in the summer. Uh, with the participation of Ukraine. Their allies reconfirmed their unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Uh, they reconfirmed that they do not and will not recognize the illegal and illegitimate annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation. And they called on Russia once again uh, to cease its involvement in the um, conflict in the east of Ukraine and to withdraw its uh, forces, equipment and support for the militants there. 2019 is a jubilee year for the organization. The alliance marks its 17th anniversary. Therefore, apart from traditional directions of political and practical cooperation, the organization is also preparing for the holding of certain special festivities. Although Ukraine is not a member, but a very, very important partner, we are actually looking forward to celebrating with you. Uh, we are preparing a number of interesting public events uh, in Kiev, in, in Odessa, in, in Lviv, uh, Kharkiv, Dnipro and other cities. Uh, so please stay tuned and join us for the celebrations.